What's up guys, welcome back to another video. So chances are you've already heard of Photoshop AI and specifically its generative fill and what it can do. Now in this video, I wanna explore a little bit more of its workflow and how it can be applied to specifically portrait work since that's mainly what I shoot. I'm interested to see how creative we can kind of get with it and how much more interesting we can make these portraits. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump on the computer and get this video started. All right, so let's start with this portrait. Now, as you can see, the crop is pretty tight. This isn't exactly how I wanted it, but I was limited with the amount of space that I could use and also with the tight lens that I was using in particular for this video, which if you haven't seen, I'll put a card up here so you can watch it. But this is actually where you, this tool really comes in handy and I'm gonna show you right now. Let's go ahead and click on the crop tool. Let's just bring out this corner a little bit. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit as well. Now let's center the frame just a little bit. And then I'm gonna just hit enter, okay? And then from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use our marquee tool and I'm gonna make a selection real quick. And notice how I'm actually including a bit of the actual image. This is so that we give the AI a little bit to work with as far as the content of our image. Now, once this is finalized, I'm gonna click on generative fill and I'm gonna actually just leave this blank and I'm gonna just let Photoshop do its thing and see what it comes up with. Okay, and just like that, it's pretty crazy. It like literally matched everything. That's the thing that blows my mind with this tool is it matched just the color grade. The way that I edited this image initially, it's kind of ridiculous. And if you look here in the corner, it literally matched the pattern of the brick as well. Now you can see it didn't do too good of a job of like generating the heel of the boot, but Photoshop actually gives us three different versions. This is the first one. Let's cycle through the second and see if maybe it did a better job here. Okay, that actually looks pretty good as well. And you can see the rest of the frame looks pretty spot on. Let's see the third one. All right, not as good, but you can see here on the left, it actually created a bit of like a rundown building, kind of giving into the aesthetic of the entire image. Now, just for this example, I'm gonna click on this one, which is our second, because I think it created the heel pretty well. But see, just like that, within a few seconds, you were able to basically expand your image and get the crop that you were going for. Now let's jump to the second image. I'm gonna do basically something very, very similar because once again, the lens that I was using and the, exactly where I wanted to frame the shot, this is basically all I had to work with, but I want to expand this just a little bit more. So let's go ahead and click our crop tool. And once again, we're just gonna expand. I don't really wanna to expand too much here, but just enough to give us a little bit more of a different look and a little bit more margin to play with. So once again, I'm gonna use my marquee tool and I'm gonna just add a little bit of the image here so that the AI has a little bit of content to work with. All right, just like that. And once again, I'm gonna click generative fill. I'm gonna leave it blank and just let Photoshop do its thing. And just like that, it recreated an expansion of the image like seamlessly. Like I can't even tell down here, for example, where it starts and where it ends. That is absolutely insane. Look, it even matched a little bit of this brush coming up. It kind of like added the tree here. All right, that's, that's option one. Let's go ahead and see what option two is. All right, it's a little bit wonky here. There's like a random tree trunk, doesn't fit too well, but the rest looks really good. And then three, it added the tree here. That's freaking mind blowing. Now let's see if we can get a little more creative with this image actually. I'm gonna use our uh, option one because I think it looks the most natural. All right, and here I'm gonna click on the background layer and I'm gonna click on our lasso tool and I'm gonna see if we can just add an object back here. So I'm gonna make a small selection, something like this. I'm gonna click that generative fill in and I'm gonna enter a prompt. Let's go with old wooden barn. Hit enter and let's go ahead and now see what that generates. Okay, now as you can see, it's a little bit cut off. Not to worry though, that's just where the layer is. Now, if we slide the layer up to the top, we'll see the entire barn, all right? Now, I'm not a huge fan of this. I don't think it fits too well. So let's cycle through the second one. Uh, not too bad, but it is really, really dark for some reason. Uh, not too bad either, but I'm not a huge fan. Now we can click just generate one more time and it's gonna use that same prompt and create another three versions, which are hopefully better than these three. Okay, that I like a little bit more. Now, the crazy thing here is once again, it seems to just be able to match the tones without any issue. Now let's see the option two. Uh, not a big fan of that, option three. 
I'm really liking one. So let's go ahead and stick with that. Now let's see if we can make the image just a little bit more interesting and see if we can add a little bit of uh, some clouds to this top because there's a lot of negative space here. Once again, let's go click on our background layer and I'm just gonna make a selection here. I'm just gonna be rough, doesn't have to be perfect. Boom, just like that. And I'm gonna click my generative fill button and let's enter our prompt, which will be uh, dramatic clouds. Hit generate and let's see what we get. Okay, that's obviously looks weird. Once again, let's go ahead and slide this layer up to the top. All right, now that is looking pretty sweet. Once again, always blows my mind how AI in this Photoshop beta at that is able to replicate these objects or just generate these objects and match the tones of the entire image. It's freaking crazy. Let's cycle to the second one. All right, kind of cool. And the third doesn't look too natural here. I'm actually liking the first one the most, but I do want to generate one more time to see what we can get. Okay, that one, definitely not that great. I think it doesn't really look too natural. That one either. And I don't know what's going on here with this, but not what we were going for. Let's go ahead and stick with this one. I think that looks cool. And just like that, we were able to make the image just slightly more interesting in just a few clicks and writing a couple of sentences. Now on this image, I wanna try and get pretty creative because there is a lot of negative space that I think we can play with and really make the image that more interesting. So for starters, you can see here in the foreground, right next to the model, there is a lot of negative space on this asphalt. I'm gonna use my lasso tool. I'm gonna to actually come around this area, around him and even select this part back here. And we're gonna generate a simple prompt here and see just out of curiosity what it comes up with. And the prompt is just going to be lake. Okay, I don't know what the heck happened here. I don't even see any water. Let's see what the second option gives us. Okay, there's water. Let's see what the third one gives us. All right, that's kind of cool, but not exactly what I was going for. Let's generate that one more time. And hopefully this time around, the next three options are gonna be significantly better than this. Okay, that one's actually pretty cool. I'm digging that. And you can see here in the bottom right of the frame, it like added this pylon, which is also cool because it just adds more depth to the overall image. Let's cycle through these options. See, that's kind of cool too, but not exactly what I was going for. Let's see number three. Eh, not exactly what I was going for either, but let's go back to one because I think this is pretty cool. Another thing that just freaking blows my mind is you can see it actually created the reflection here of this little brigade, this little um, block right here, which is crazy to me. This is looking kind of cool. It's really weird, but you know, it is what it is. Photoshop, it's not perfect. Mind you, this is in its beta, which is still crazy how good it is being in its beta. Now here in the top right of the frame, I wanna see if I can add something here to maybe draw you into the image a little bit more because it's just, it was a really cloudy day that day and you know, the sky was just blown out. So let's go ahead and select our background uh, layer. I'm gonna actually just select all of this, a little bit of the building here as well. Once again, I just wanna give the, the AI a little bit to work with here, okay? Click generative fill and let's just uh, type in uh, futuristic bridge. Let's see what that gives us. <laughs> what is this? I don't know what it is, but it's kind of cool because it like really draws you in and plays with the leading lines. Like a crazy thing here too is like, if you really pay attention, you can see it's really sharp here and then slowly you have that fall off of bokeh back here. Pretty cool that it just tends to match exactly the image overall. Still blows my mind, but let's go ahead and cycle through option number two. Okay, that's really funky, but really, really cool in its own way. Let's see number three. All right, that is freaking stellar. That looks so cool. Now, obviously you zoom in and you can see kind of some issues here. It's not perfect, but hey, it's in its beta and I think this looks really freaking cool. Like the leading lines here, right? The curves here and then the curve down here. This looks really, really cool. And that was just in a matter of seconds. Now, as you can see, you can get extremely creative. I don't think this technology is anything to be feared. In fact, I think the total opposite. I think it really helps us as creatives 
get even more creative in a different type of way. And I think the possibilities are, are essentially endless. And I'm really excited to see where this tech is going to go over the next few months, especially the fact that this is simply just in its beta and not even officially released. Imagine how good this is going to be in just a few months. And that is gonna wrap up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help the channel continue to grow. And if you're not already subscribed, consider doing so. I would truly appreciate the support. With that said, thanks again for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.